Hey everyone, in this video we're touring an extra wide single story tiny house on wheels with an open concept living space, a walkthrough bathroom and a main floor bedroom. The Huckleberry is 30 feet long and 10 feet wide and it's packed with unique features like an antique wood stove and clawfoot bathtub, handmade cabinetry, rough sawn wood detailing, diamond shaped windows and a lot more. Jess and Pat from Rewild Homes are gonna give us a full tour, so let's go check it out. This is a 30 foot by 10 foot tiny house that we custom built for a client. She was a very unique individual with a lot of very interesting taste. She also wanted to bring us some of the materials to integrate into her build and use as many reclaimed things as possible. She is a yoga instructor who spends part of her time here on the island, but her husband works on the mainland, so she kind of splits her time. It is mostly her living here by herself, but back and forth. So this is one of the two entrances. Um, she just wanted more of an open landing when she would get home. Uh, she does have another entrance, which we'll show you later. You rarely see a, a, a larger open space in a tiny house like this. So she really wanted a space that could be multifunctional. Uh, but the main part was for her to have a nice space where she could comfortably do some yoga in a couple different positions. So in this build, it does become apparent right away that there is a number of different types of wood. And it can definitely be a faux pas uh, having so many different kinds, you know, particularly when you have a, a, an acacia type uh, engineered hardwood flooring. Those colors tend to contrast with a natural pine. However, we did talk her into at least letting us do a whitewash on the pine walls. Most of all of the trim is cedar. The beams and rafter ties and posts are fir. So there are a number of very interesting um, customizations, you know, just small things like, you know, having the diamond uh, windows, uh, we did add two of those at the same time to when we uh, added this uh, bay window bump out area. Uh, originally it was one window and a, and a flat wall, which we uh, modified. Definitely it was the right um, uh, move for her. She was able to get quite a bit more area for seating uh, for her little reading nook there. She wanted a cooktop stove, uh, which was a, an old reclaimed Yotol stove. So she supplied us with that. She doesn't do a ton of cooking, uh, so she just wanted something that where she could bake some bread via wood, uh, and then the rest of her cooking would be done on an induction cooktop. So for this home, uh, the site was able to facilitate full utility hookup, so power, water, septic. So her main heating source is electric as well as her water heat. So she wanted to add this from a, a somewhat romantic uh, side of things, but also as you know, winter time, it is just nice to curl up next to a, a wood fire. Uh, this is actually where you, you have your fire in here, ashes here, you know, bit of a flu, and this is where she bakes. So of course, since she has two full elements on top for cooking and another access to feed the fire should she not you know want to go in this way there is no built-in heat shield like some of the newer like maybe the more so or the, or the other new fireplaces so with this one we just decided to go with the heat shield as you see it here with your one inch air gap behind uh, and then a full tiled hearth so this tile is inset down to the subfloor not just on top of the flooring so moving into the kitchen area she really doesn't do a whole lot of cooking so we did wire in services to be able to facilitate a, a dual induction cooktop, but for the most part, any of the larger meals she wants to cook will be done on the stove. For this area, she, she really wanted to bring the outside in with exterior cedar shake for the cabinet door fronts, but this is all, all um, custom made here. Uh, and then some old reclaimed, this is, we estimate, you know, about a hundred years old. So um, she just wanted plain drawer fronts for those. So the countertop is actually old growth, nice tight grain fur, lambed together into the butcher block. Uh, all the pieces were pulled from structural beams out of a factory in Vancouver um, when it was being demolished. So you, you rarely see um, nice tight grain like this uh, anymore, which is, which is too bad, but it was reclaimed. 
So this is a granite sink. She wanted a, a relatively small uh, actual sink, but having this kind of wood, she just tried to mitigate as much, you know, water staining or whatever on it. She wanted minimal treating of anything. So we did go with just a Danish oil. So over here, she wanted to add another area where she did have people or she actually felt like sitting down at a table to have a, a, a drink or coffee or a meal. She wanted just a small raised bar top here where she could you know, entertain slightly. Um, originally here, we had laid out upper cabinets and lower base cabinets, but then she really didn't want to impede any of this light here. So first she nixed the upper cabinets and wanted the most funky kind of random depth, different positioned shelving of the pieces that she had supplied. Uh, and then at the same time decided to nix the lower cabinets as well and just go with a bit of a coffee and wine bar. So we went with one of the more difficult types of roofs that you can do, uh, particularly on a tiny home. Uh, going with the gabled roof line, we have two dormers and a, a skylight as well as the wood stove um, exiting into the chimney outside. So we'll take you into the bathroom. Quite a bit larger, at least with regards to how much stuff we fit in here uh, with this bathroom. So she wanted to go with a stackable washer dryer. As I said before, she does have full services, so we did go with a uh, flush toilet. A lot of people are a huge fan of the, the claw foot tub, so we, we were able to reclaim this one. It's a cast iron enamel coated old heavy tub. It took five of us to get this thing in here. Uh, what we did is cut out down through the tile so that we could get right down to the subfloor and then we put a composite products silicone in and up so that they're flush with the tile so that the point load of this had safe spots to secure and then we threw bolted it all the way down. With tiny homes the obvious first consideration should be the mobility factor. They are going to move. Stone and, and tile can break particularly in transport so Again, that's why we use a, a semi-flexible grout. So this actually came from our client's husband's grandmother who built this. Uh, so we were able to make some modifications so that she could still use it. <laughs> you know, that there is still some space in there, which with drainage plumbing, sometimes retrofitting, uh, reclaim things. But yeah, it can just take more time sometimes to, to work with pre-existing things having a top of the line venting fan on a timer so that you can also program it and have it so that it'll turn on just from, from an air exchange perspective as well. You create moisture, you need to learn how to deal with it and live with it. Uh, another really good way to kind of have really good control of your, your moisture and your, your temperature is in floor heat. Particularly when you're doing such small square footages, you know, you can really invest in those types of things. So, of course, this is um, all natural slate with in-floor heat throughout. Uh, we went with a Dutch door so that she could have a bit of a, a mudroom uh, wet entry, um, you know, somewhere she can come in and just kind of hang her, her um, you know, coats and gear and stuff. You know, it's all about maximizing where you can have storage without, you know, stacking bins on top of each other. So. Of course, we, we closed this off to give her some storage space here, as well as up top. With a uh, more of a single story, no loft layout, uh, you do become somewhat limited. You know, either you have the bathroom at an end wall, or you can put it in the middle. You know, and with people who are considering, you know, this is my forever home, I'm, I'm aging in place here, uh, it, it can be beneficial to have the bathroom right adjacent to the bedroom. Uh, also, you know, just from a functional, you know, having people over standpoint, you don't typically want them to have to walk through your bedroom to get to the other end where you have the bathroom. So often we like to try and bring the uh, outside in, uh, you know, particularly when we have offcuts of stuff. So we brought in some of the uh, trim and siding pieces as well as the, the kind of color palette of the outside um, just for some, some custom barn doors. Really helps close off the bathroom, even though she's mostly alone. Um, you know, she, she almost said no doors, but uh, yeah, we still went ahead and just gave her some privacy barn doors. So of course, without a loft, you want to have a bedroom wherever you can fit it. Uh, and so this one, we wanted to maximize storage. You know, we, we did give her um, 
some uh, sliding doors, with one being a floor-to-ceiling mirror, and the other just matching the uh, pine tongue and groove. As well as, of course, the largest possible bed, uh, we were able to fit in a, a double here. This one is also over width. So we go with the standard built tiny home trailer. And then what we build is um, what we kind of call like a raised cantilevered subfloor. Uh, and then we secure that to the trailer independently because then we also you know, secure the walls down through uh, separately. You don't want cedar going all the way to the ground or all the way to a deck because typically you'll, you'll be getting that splash back and you just get significantly more wear and weathering on the wood itself. And so where it would go right down to the deck is metal. It really helps with weathering. My favorite part of this job is designing the tiny home. So I work with each person to lay the home out and seeing this home come together was really exciting because we all had sort of our um, reservations about mixing all of these different kinds of wood and all of these reclaimed things. And then having those things come together and us be able to actually make that vision come to life was really exciting. If you want to check out Rewild Homes, we'll put a link to their website and Instagram in the description below. Also, be sure to subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlist for more stories like this. Thanks for watching.